everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Haley and I'm an educator at San Diego Audubon Society. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to do an owl pellet dissection. Owl pellet dissections are pretty easy for us to do and are such a great way to learn more about the diet and behavior of owls. I recommend watching the video all the way through before getting started. That way you'll know exactly what to expect and then you're free to work at your own pace. If you've never done a dissection before, you may be wondering, what does that word mean? A dissection is when you pull something apart in order to study its parts or what's inside of it. Dissections can be a little bit messy, but they're a great way for us to learn more about plants and animals and ultimately how we can help conserve and protect them. For our owl pellet dissection today, you won't need too many materials. The most important thing that you'll need is your owl pellet. Beyond that, a pair of tweezers really helps us to pick through the pellet and it's great to have a petri dish which is a small tray you can use to sort out the things that you find. I'll be holding my owl pellet up as I go through my dissection today but it's probably a good idea to be working on a table or a flat surface. It's also great to have a bone identification sheet which will help you figure out what type of animal your owl has been eating. So what exactly is this little owl pellet? Well, owls are carnivores, which means that they eat other animals. So things like mice, rats, and even other birds. These animals are usually covered in fur or feathers and have small bones inside of their bodies. Owls can't digest or break down fur and bones. So instead, inside of their stomachs, they gather all of that stuff together and it forms this kind of small pellet, which they actually spit up or regurgitate about once a day. It's kind of like if you've ever seen a cat cough up a fur ball, but it's a lot more interesting because there's all these cool bones and different things inside. Now, if we were to find one of these out in the wild, it might not be super safe for us to touch, but pellets that are used by di for dissections have been cleaned at high temperatures, so they are completely safe for us to touch. But if you are a little bit nervous, that's where our tweezers come in. These are really, really great for helping to pick apart the little pieces and the small bones inside. And they're really nice to have if you need a little bit of time getting comfortable with your pellet. So once you have all of your materials gathered up, you're ready for our owl pellet dissection. The first thing you wanna do if you're wearing long sleeves like me is to roll them up so that they don't get dirty. Then you can go ahead and unwrap your owl pellet. Once you've unwrapped it, it's kind of up to you how you wanna start pulling it apart. So once I have mine unwrapped, I kind of like to break my pellet in half, and then I'm gonna start kind of looking through and leaving parts of it on the foil. Then when I start finding different bones, I put those into my Petri dish so that I can get a closer look. You'll notice that most of the pellet is made up of fur, which can get a little bit messy when it starts coming apart. That's why I try and keep the pellet over the foil. This makes it easy for cleanup and kind of keeps the fur all in one spot. So right away, you're gonna start noticing all sorts of really cool things inside of your pellet. Although these pellets all come from owls, each one is gonna have different bones depending on what that particular owl has just eaten. That's the cool thing about doing these owl pellet dissections. Even if you've done one before, each one ends up being different and there's always something new for us to learn. I'm definitely starting to notice some really interesting things inside of my pellet. So what I can do is grab my bone identification sheet and try to match the bone with the one in the picture. That's gonna tell me not only what type of body part it is, but also what type of animal it came from. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to tell, but we can make our best scientific guess. You'll be amazed at how quickly you start to pick up the bone identification once you start finding more. So when you feel like you've gotten to a place where you've pulled most of the bones out and you're probably just left with a whole mess of fur, that probably means you're about done. Everybody works at their own pace and how long your dissection takes you might also depend on what your owl has eaten. I'm doing my dissection by myself today, but hopefully you're doing yours with a friend or some classmates. It's always really fun once you finish looking at your own owl pellet to spend some time looking at what other people found. Like I said, even though these owl pellets come from the same type of owl, no two are exactly the same. So definitely be sure and take some time to compare with some of the other classmates what type of bones you were able to find in your pellet. Thanks for joining me today for our owl pellet dissection. Now that you have an idea of what to expect, once you have your pellet, your tweezers, your bone identification sheet, and your petri dish, you can go ahead and get started. Hope you have fun exploring and find lots of really cool stuff.